It's Friday following the Festival of the Trinity, June the 4th, 2021. Good to be with you as we are being strengthened by the Holy Spirit, working through the Word just as He has promised to do, so that we might have faith in Christ. Friday is our day to listen to the Minor Prophets. We wrapped up Hosea last week. We're now ready to move on to the next Minor Prophet, that is Joel. It's a fit opportunity for us to remember why they are called Minor Prophets. It has nothing to do with the significance of what they have to say. It's just simply about the brevity, the amount of material so that the 12 minor prophets together take up what would have been one full scroll in the ancient world, just like Isaiah or Jeremiah, each of them would have taken up their own scroll. So it's all just about the size. It's also a good reminder for us of this, that just as these minor prophets are no less than the major prophets, their message is just as significant. They still bear the inspired word of God. This is also true when it comes to congregations. We dare not fall into the pit of telling ourselves, well, there is a truly great congregation because of its size or its influence over others versus a smaller congregation that's not as well known and such. No, every congregation has the highest significance because they bear the word of God. They have received the means of grace right there. The Lord is at work where he has promised to be in the word, in baptism, in the supper. And so there are no greater or lesser congregations. They all have the Spirit at work. You could even say that about our little Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, our denomination. In the grand scheme of things, we are a small, uh, a small denomination. But nevertheless, we have the highest significance. Why? Because we have the Word of God. And even though our numbers may be smaller, having the faithful confession of who Christ is and what he has done for us, a faithful commitment to the scriptures gives us the greatest significance because that is where the Spirit is at work. But today, let's rejoice specifically in what the Holy Spirit is teaching us in Joel chapter 1. Now, early on in Joel 1, we hear this. What the cutting locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the hopping locust has eaten. And what the hopping locust left, the destroying locust has eaten. Now, this is one of the reasons why some of these prophets can be rather challenging, is they come up with all these different words for locusts. We usually think of the locust and, uh, well, you don't have four different types like you do here. There's just one. Uh, so it gives out, kind of pulls out a thesaurus with all these different uh, titles. But the point is rather clear, that there is nothing that is being left untouched by this plague of locusts that have come upon them. And here, understand the locust is, uh, for the ancient world, it's much more like what you and I might think of being similar to a grasshopper. The swarms come in and can consume everything. There was not that terribly long ago, a century ago, that we'd have the same kind of experience at times here in the United States, where farmers could see their entire year's work wiped out rather quickly by a swarm of locusts, if you will, coming in and wiping it out. Now, that was uh, not an uncommon thing, tragically, in the ancient world. And Joel is using that here to describe the coming judgment of the Lord. He very well may be speaking about a true uh, locust swarm that came upon and devoured everything in the land. But he's also using that to set the stage about what God is causing to happen in judgment for his people that a foreign nation is coming. In fact, he then says this shortly thereafter. A nation has come against my land, powerful and beyond number. Its teeth are lion's teeth, and it has the fangs of a lioness. So as God sends a foreign nation against his people to judge them for their sin, not only are they like a locust, devouring everything else uh, in their path, but also they're like a lion, overwhelming and powerful, intimidating and scary. Now, this is to get God's people's attention. They have fallen into sin. They've fallen into idolatry. So here comes judgment to get their attention. And it does, because here is what Joel says. He says, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly. In other words, people, we need to repent. Even right before talking about consecrating a fast, he tells the priests, put on sackcloth. 
That is what they would put on as an act of repentance. Fasting was also tied to repentance, that you would turn aside from certain foods or even food in general for a period of time as a way to say, we are sorrowful for our sin. We can live without that food, but we cannot live without the Lord and his grace and mercy. We are in dire need for it. Now, Joel has even more to say to get their attention. He says, alas for the day. For the day of the Lord is near. Now, in the prophets, the day of the Lord is a statement of judgment. He says judgment is coming. Now, especially the day of the Lord is even pointing to the very last day. It's an eschatological term about the judgment of the last day when all of our sin will be exposed. Now, you and I need not fear that day because we know that the weight of our sin has been borne by Christ so that we are declared forgiven, all for Christ's sake. But when one lives in impenitence, like God's people were at the time of Joel, the day of the Lord is downright scary. Alas for the day, because here comes judgment. So when you see judgment coming, like Joel did, like his contemporaries did, what do you do? Well, you do exactly what Joel says. He says, to you, O Lord, I call. That is where peace and deliverance will be found. Call upon the Lord, and he will give answer to your need. Now, we're going to hear about that in the coming chapters of Joel, chapter 2 and 3, that will come in these next two Fridays. But rejoice in this. You don't have to wait till next Friday. Call upon the Lord right now, because he gives answer when you call upon him with faith in Christ his Son to forgive all your sin, to deliver you from the the wrath that should be visited upon you because of your sin, because Christ has borne it on your behalf. No need to fear the swarming locusts, the lion coming upon you. Even if you call a fast, you know that the Lord hears you, not because of your fast, but because of your trust in Christ, who's won God's grace for you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Give us ears to hear the call of the prophet Joel, so that we too might be brought to repentance for our sin, repentance that not only shows forth sorrow for that sin, but also full confidence, faith in Christ our Savior as the one who delivers us from your judgment. And let us look forward to the day of his return, that great and final day when we know that he will deliver us from our sin and bring us into life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.